Okay, what is the worst, most inconvenient thing that we could pack in our suitcase all the way from Australia? I think it would have to be something that's really bulky and heavy and really, really oddly shaped and ideally would take like half of our entire luggage capacity. <laughs> it would take up space where you could probably pack about 15 games, yes. board games, yes. but instead just <laughs> one item. And rollerblades. Rollerblades. Or inline skates, to be more specific. <laughs> what yeah. were we thinking? So we decided that because we were traveling again, kind of unexpectedly mm. for such a long period of time, we really like get out of our routine, yeah. exercise. And so recently, Maggie and I have been getting back into inline skating or for the 90s kids. We're just uh, reliving, rollerblading. Yeah, reliving the 90s. We're yeah. kind of going back to our sweet spot. <laughs> and it's been the perfect winter activity activity in Melbourne, but we thought because we're coming to the Lake District in Minnesota, we're in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. St. Paul, and we're going to Chicago where there's Lake yes. Michigan. Yeah, exactly. And it's summertime. Lots of beautiful by the yeah, by the water potential skating. Exactly. We yeah. thought we'd bring our rollerblades. We thought that before the day gets too hot early in the morning, mm -hmm. we'll have our coffees and then we'll go on a coffee matcha for you yes, or chai. Yes, matcha or chai. And yes. then we would go off Blading, yeah, and stay fit. I was fairly convinced that we like they probably wouldn't even leave the suitcase. Like they would, we would truck, like track them, track what was it? Trek with them like, across the world. But at least so far, they've they've gotten used. We're doing well. Yeah. We're using them. But the unexpected thing is that when people talk about what are you doing other than working, other than board gaming while you're here in the States. And we say, oh, you know, well, we've taken up inline skating again. And it creates so much conversation mm -hmm. amongst 90s kids. Yeah, it's a it's a very nostalgic sort of it's like, oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. And we all kind of feel like we remember how to do it, which sometimes we kind of do. But yeah, and you connect with people. You yeah. connect with people. And some people have a pair sitting at home. If you're watching this, maybe you've got a pair of blades Dust sitting at home. Off. Dust them off yeah. um, and, and get back on them. And we thought, you know, there's no way that we're going to be able to do it anymore. And then we went with tri skate, so the three wheeled, larger wheeled mm -hmm. skates. But it's kind of like riding a bike, only if the bike was extremely dangerous and we were scared for breaking things. <laughs> yeah. I hit a stick the other day yeah and i went flying yeah. i didn't hit you the were, ground i recovered yeah yeah but it was terrifying yeah. anyway anyways. one of the 90s kids anyway back to the main point of the story cole worley yes so designer of root this year john company yes um, both pax premier, pax premier all Second of edition, these yeah. incredibly intricate smart mm. design board games that i know that so many people love uh you know, super intimidating, smart guy because he's just like academic <laughs> and a wonderful. lovely human. <laughs> but also, he's into rollerblading. Yeah. Who knew? So we went rollerblading Who together. Who knew? Like, so we skating. went rollerblading with Cole Worley, which yeah. is possibly the most random thing that we've ever done uh, while Never traveling did for board I games. Imagine that would be one of the things that I would say. Yeah, I've just done that. I know. Next, and then next will be like water polo with Uwe Rosenberg or something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Some Who knows? Activity. Life is strange. Yeah. But we were by the lake. We and were. then and Cole is an avid sailor. And uh, so he took us out on like one of the sailboats. He took us taught us how to sailing. Sailing. And so Maggie's never been sailing before. I have a, a little bit, but a long time ago, and never, you know, by myself, never manning all the sails mm -hmm. and everything. Um, but he taught us how to do it. And it was such a beautiful yeah. day on the water. It was really nice. So yeah. we went rollerblading mm -hmm. and then we went sailing. Yeah. Then we went and had an amazing hamburger oh, yeah. because America. Yeah. Um, Best. Yeah. And then Burgers. he taught us how to play uh, Molly House, yes, or at least the most new... recent iteration of that. So Under development yes. uh, game. So yes. that is a game that they've been working on really hard for mm. the last little while. Of course, it has um, queer subject matter, so mm. it's super interesting to us. So we're going to be keeping across like all of the developments as the game yeah. kind of gets um, advanced and as yes. it goes and changes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, since we're kind of going backwards in time, that was the most recent thing we did. Yes. So we're going to work our way back. Um, we went to a couple of uh, head offices of we different uh, publishers. Yes. So well, one, uh, we went to Leader Games. Leader so Games. So that was a pretty cool to be able to kind of walk in and see all of the, they've got so much of the artwork 
which obviously, you know, Cal Farron, mm-hmm. amazing artwork. Immediately, uh, you can sort of immediately spot it. And they sort of all made it the walls. all over the walls and like all the different awards, obviously, that they've won. And it was just so cool to see like so many, all the tables where things get tested and developed and played. Um, and like everyone was so lovely. Patrick, Brooke, um, yes. who actually also then uh, embraced us, allowed us to spend like so much time there. Like we so spent like time. half the day. Oh, we spent a lot of time at Leader Games. <laughs> and we're just playing games. Hanging out, meeting all of the team. Yeah, they were just yeah. so welcoming. And they have a lot of interns there who are also yes. like working on game development and we got to it was, it was really cool to see behind the scenes mm. because you know as reviewers we often just see the final product yeah. sometimes some prototypes but there's so much development work that goes so on much so work. so much yeah for years yeah. and so many people that contribute to those efforts and but the graphic designers and every people are even kind of figuring out like how the are inserts. the inserts going to work and sort of you know making makeshift inserts to sort of figure out the like how we're going to divide things it's yeah. like just so cool to see that whole but thing. Also, the, yeah, the pride that they take in their games mm. as well. So in, yeah. in leader games, you walk in and they've got like this trophy cabinet of all the awards yeah, yeah. that they've won, but also just like root in so many different languages. Yes. It's like really cool to see that and just, you know, all of that. Because all of that effort, of course, then the success of the game mm. is so meaningful. Yeah. Um, so they, we had such a lovely day that we actually got a chance to play some games mm-hmm. while we were there. So we just sat we down did. with Brooke and yes. we played a few little filler games. Yes, we played, um, what was it, Chicken one Chicken. Called? It's, it's called chicken. chicken. Yeah, it's, it's called like, chicken. chicken farm. It's, it's a chicken by, farm. Yeah, by yeah. Keymaster um, yeah. and Scott Elms, and yeah. it's a it's a very straightforward push your luck style yes. game where you are dice. rolling dice. Yeah, but what's cool about it is you're rolling dice and you're trying to get. Um, more chickens than foxes when you roll. But what's interesting is you go bust if you get three foxes and you do have the opportunity to re-roll. But yep. what's really cool is that as um, when you go from player to player, you're often adding dice to mm. the dice pool, which makes it more risky yeah. for the next person to yeah. roll all those dice and they have more chance of rolling foxes. Basing the stakes. But you also really have, they have more chance of rolling even more chickens. And as you're increasing the, uh, the, the number of dice, they also increase in their... Um, sort of uh, not just difficulty, but also the the what do you call it? The combination of uh, chickens. So some of them all of a sudden have mm. double chickens and stuff. So it's like mm, yeah, it amps up. So mm-hmm. that was a really interesting one. It's really, really cute as well. Yeah, really yeah. pretty game, and it comes in a little cylinder, which is really cool and, and we have practical <laughs> from a storage perspective. <laughs> a st- this is what a gamer really would cute. say, but yeah. it looks really cute. Yeah, yeah. And there's a um, and then we played another game in a cylinder. Yes, uh, Lacuna. Lacuna. So that one is again another one that has a claw. Cloth, um, sort of cloth board, and that, that was so interesting because it's so like weird. beautiful little components. You have all these different tokens, wooden tokens of slightly different shapes and different but the, colors. Then a cylinder is like yeah. a salt shaker. The, yeah, yeah. And so that's what you use to sort of dist- randomly distribute all the the wooden tokens around the board. And then it almost looks mm-hmm. a little bit like a um, like a star system yeah, because you've got all these like, constellations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you've got these um, really nice little metal tokens that then it's a two player game. You're going to be putting in between uh, two. Um, wooden tokens of the mm-hmm. same color to claim those tokens. However, what happens is as you start um, placing them, you start getting in the way of other possible combinations, which means now those can't You're be blocking picked up. Them. Mm-hmm. And so ultimately it's about, it's a set collection. Well, set collection and then who has majority of the different colors. But then once everything's been placed, like all the, the tokens, the metal tokens have been placed, then the rest of the uh, of the wooden tokens are claimed based on proximity. So there's a second layer of not just, oh, what am I yeah. going to claim to then get in the way of someone else? It's also like, oh, I want to be close to as many of these yeah. leftover ones as possible. So really the simple. The end game is chaos, but also it comes with a ruler yeah, so see, that exactly. you can see Ooh. like who is closest to the yeah. leftover pieces by the millimeter. So yeah. it, that's kind of funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fun. It's actually, it was more it's, fun than I anticipated. It's also pretty relaxing but as well. very abstract. Extremely abstract. Very abstract. But I was I was uh, sort of drawn in by the colorfulness. Two player only as well. Yeah, colorfulness and the tactileness of the pieces. So I didn't mm-hmm. mind that it was so abstract. Yeah. Um, another game that we played was C. Um, is it Seeds, Seeds of, of Strife? Strife. Mm-hmm. which is a trick-taking game with beautiful um, Beth Sobel art. Mm-hmm. So in that one, what, what's the... 
Basically, you are trying not to win any tricks. So the yeah. idea is it's a, a must follow. You've got different suits, but they have different um, values on them. Like each suit has yeah. a different range of values mm. and they escalate quite quickly. And what I love about it is that the Beth Sobel art has escalating like pictures of your mm. sailboat now going down into like a whirlpool or you're about to hit an iceberg. And so it's like, you can see the strife element of it is like the higher yeah. ranked cards and the card, the way the tricks uh, work is really interesting. And I found myself quite good at this game. I don't yes. know why. Usually I'm not very good at trick yeah. taking, but in this game, it's an outlier. Yeah. You, it's <laughs> must follow, um, but you don't want to be collecting tricks because if you mm. collect tricks, they're going to be worth negative points yeah. at the end of the round. Um, but basically if you can't follow suit, you of course can play off suit. You can play any other card, but if more than one player plays like off suit and plays the same suit as each other, then that becomes a mini little trick game. Like yeah. basically it becomes a way of trumping the lead suit yeah. because then it becomes the highest number that mm, was played overall. Yeah. overall. And so you can really mess somebody up if they play off suit with a high card. Thinking, oh great, this is a great opportunity for me to yeah, like, I'm just get rid of my high cards. Yeah. That's right. That you can actually play the same suit as them off suit. And then all of a sudden they've got the highest numbered yeah. card and they take the, the trick. Yeah. So, um, I really liked it. You, I, you I were like, okay. You were like, I think, okay, I think as a, it just felt, I think as a, for a trick taking game, the hook, I feel like the hook will feel more alive at a higher player yeah, count. So we absolutely. play that at a four player, yeah. um, uh, uh, yeah, count. And I think at the higher player counts, that whole, oh no, someone all of a sudden played the same suit and now like that. That's that's going to be more. You're yes. going to feel that more. Yeah, um, I think it'll be better at a, at a six. Yeah, a six, it plays up to six players. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to trying it at a higher play count. We've you know been going to some board game shops. I've seen it around, but you know what? I probably will pick it up at Gen Con if it's there because <laughs> I won't be able to resist and I'll be on a spending spree. Yeah. So um, that's a really cute game. Um, now we also we, went. We stopped by the Chip Theory head we office. We went to the Chip. You, chip you're theory really games. playing that down Wait. because <laughs> this office is. If you are a gamer, which you probably are, if you're watching this video, yeah. this is like where you would want to work. It's in, it an incredible office fit out. Amazing. Yeah. Like I wish my office looked like this. I it mean, is incredible. <laughs> I don't still know, time. I wouldn't get any work done ever. <laughs> but as you walk into the Chip Theory yeah. Games office, um, and we met with Andrew. Thank you so much, yeah. Andrew, for taking the time out to show us around. Yeah. The, there is this giant tree. Mm. So there's a giant tree. And there's one of the characters like indoors, so uh, over the indoors. archway, like over Good one point. of the the doors that you're going through. Um, in the tree, it's not only is it huge and very realistic. In the roots, it almost it's got light, so it looks like it's sort of bursting and like there's some kind of uh, mana or something sort of pulsating uh, within. It's just such a cool yeah, effect. It is. It really is. And um, next to the tree is one of the characters from Too Many Bones yeah, who have, are like life-size, yeah, basically. Have, they have them separ in several places. So it's like they just, it's just like a full, um, what do you call it? Like a, it's not like a mannequin, but like a full size Actually, I don't know what size they would be, <laughs> but they were almost like life size. human size. Yeah. yeah. And then what was really cool is they had printed Tiny. mats that were yeah. on the ground that were like the locations that you go to. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah, was cool. But like then, the encounter cards and, yeah. Uh, from, yeah, from Too Many Bones. So that's cool. Yeah. But then you walk in and there's like, I don't know, maybe 10 board game tables, like huge board game yeah. tables, a board game library. There was like an air hockey kind of table, yeah, a yeah. billiards table. There was a big buck the, hunter, yeah. some pinball machines. They have their like, own bar that's also really kind of really like, yeah, really cool kind of setup. Yeah. And then and the it, office space itself was made out of shipping containers. Mm. So they've stacked all of these shipping containers inside this big warehouse space. And it just... 
so cool and everyone had their like individual little shipping yeah. container and they everyone had decorated their spaces yeah. a little bit differently but just yeah. awesome office yeah. awesome awesome office and all the people again were just so lovely as we walked around mm. and did our little tour yeah. their people kept coming out of their offices to say hi <laughs> yeah. um, and we got an opportunity to see you know some games stacked up ready to be mm. shipped out yeah. Um, yeah. lots of demo stuff lying around lots of prototypes they were just a about to do a live stream of El- yeah, Elden cool Studio as well. well. Elden Scroll? Does Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elder Scrolls, you can see I don't know much about any of that IP. <laughs> I know um, very little, but I'm yeah. learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and also we got a chance to see the new card game, 20 Strong. Uh, yes. So if yeah. you've been following along with Chip Theory Games, they, um, they obviously have been developing a card game that is a little bit like One Deck One Dungeon. One Deck Dungeon is what it kind of yeah reminds me of where you're – yeah, you're essentially using a whole bunch of dice and then it, it's different in that with the cards, like there's different sets of cards that play slightly differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, then all you of the have your kind of heroes different. and then you're kind of uh, battling other. Sometimes it's like with, with one of the packs, it's like you, you pick your hero, but then you're going to be battling the other hero. So on the other side of the cards, they have um, what their sort of um, anti stats would be. Mm-hmm. The cards themselves are also really cool. Like they beautiful. have this kind of foil, a little bit of foil, yeah. really, really it's beautiful. Them, so yeah, um, and also the IP from each of the decks because this is a solo game, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, but the IP is from like each of their games, mm. and so it's really nice if you're yeah. a fan of their games yeah. because you can play with the different decks. Also, I really liked that within each of the decks there was a, I think a little star on each of the cards that could be combined together. So yeah. Yeah, across yeah. decks you can also mash them up which yeah. I thought was really, cool, really cool as well yeah so um, we went obviously there are so many different uh, publishers here smaller publishers as well but mm. seems like a real like hotbed of game design here yeah. in Minneapolis yeah. so that was great we also got to go and check out a number of different game stores yeah. in and around the city we like, did a big tour by Uber. Spent a we, whole day just like, <laughs> just like hopping, checking from, out all the sites. Yeah, yeah game store. By game far, store. the biggest one and most impressive one was the Source. Oh my Source, goodness! Yeah, games and comics. Comics. Yeah, they have a big comic was book selection. Huge. Huge. Unlike any game store yeah. that we have in Australia, this was massive. But also just the fact that there's so many games that they're mm. in alphabetical order and they're just just so much and there were yeah. so many little card games and things i picked up a couple of card games of course but great selection um, things that well. yeah things that i haven't mm. ever seen available at retail so yeah. just uh, and like all of the big kickstarter campaigns they mm. were all there like with all of the trimmings where yeah. you could just go and pick up an entire pledge of something there was yeah, just really good so much there to explore yeah. unfortunately we don't have much um Luggage we have space. No luggage because space. we're saving it for Gen yeah, Con. until we get to Gen Con yeah. and then, you know, new suitcases uh, manifest. <laughs> yeah. To, yeah, be able to we also, yeah, pack things. Yes, we also went to um, another little one called Level Up. Yeah, Games. Level Up was really yeah. nice, really mm-hmm. cosy. Play has its, like a, um, a couple of playing areas. Mm. That was really nice. It's sort of like yeah. a base. It's sort of you kind of go down one level and it's all sort of wooden and a little bit more uh, kind of like a darker, but really comfortable warm sort of environment and the people that were really lovely as well great selection even though it's a lot smaller yeah really really like hand-picked sort of titles which was cool yeah so it was so much fun being here in minneapolis we haven't had a lot of time to actually sit down and play games and get out into the community because Mm -hmm. it's been pretty hectic um you know i've been working here during the day and then at night we work australian hours Mm -hmm. so we start work at like 5 p.m and work all the way through so that's been super challenging but we we're lucky to have the weekend to get yeah. out and explore as much as we could yeah. and go see those publishers. Thank you so much for having us. Um, and then, since we're working Let's backwards, work backwards in time, yeah. we first we arrived. started our trip in Stamford, Connecticut. Yeah. Um, I've never been to Connecticut no, before. No, same. Even and though I lived in New York, which is very close by. Very close yeah. by. But the weirdest been... thing was we got in very late at night. Like, it was close to midnight. We get into our room and then we're lying there and all you can hear is seagulls <laughs> yeah. 
like seagulls really close Just and we're like, like having an argument where are we so, well no, i sort of knew that we were by the i knew water. we were by the water but i didn't like realize we were exactly. so close yeah and yeah and there was just so many seagulls mm. and they were chatting away yeah squawking away i think it was partly i think that particular night yeah. there was a storm it was the a tornado morning. that yeah. had been so coming i think through. they're quite restless they uh, were very restless they yeah. were pecking on the window and <laughs> yes, they was so cool. they were just so it was like the birds loud. it was <laughs> like the birds it's i was like where birds. like because oh. we just landed and it was dark and so you know when you get to a hotel and you've got no idea of what the surrounding yeah, yeah. area is like we're like why are we surrounded by birds but anyway in the morning we saw these giant seagulls they, that were not, just they're hanging out in australia they're not that big they're not that like, big like they're like in tiny. australia they're like this big these it's ones nice. were like these ones, they were scary. Like a goose. And I'd be, I'd like <laughs> peer like... out the window and they'd be like, peck, 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 yeah. peck. It's like aggressive. <laughs> they must have been able to see their reflection, I think. They were pecking yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think well, they, they couldn't were see aggressively us, no. trying to get us. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. And, and it got better. I think it was just the storm. It was, was just the storm that yeah. had scared them. So Anyways. the first night. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So level up retreat. This was the inaugural yeah. first retreat of this type yeah um by level up games uh by not the not the board game not store the, not the store unrelated unrelated Same, yeah um level up conventions and events yeah and uh so cool because it was such a great it was you know alex from board game Co, i should mm-hmm. say is one of the uh main kind of collaborators yeah, that helped pull it together yeah. and was like and you know the whole time kind of organizing everything and he had invited us a long Mm. time ago we didn't think we were going to be able to make it and we got to go Um, and it was just so nice to be part of something that was so new Mm. particularly because it brought a lot of locals and by local I mean you know anyone within three hours drive was driving into this convention and we're so excited to have something like it in Mm. their local area yeah because you know, a lot of those people go to pack some plugs, probably mm. the closest down Yeah, we down never in really Philly. end up getting to go to yeah. that. Yeah. But um, all the locals were excited to have this new convention. Mm-hmm. We were excited to be there. Yeah. And there were so many great people yes. that were there um, also enjoying it for the first time. So many content creators as well. Like the so ratio many. of content creators to non-content was actually quite high. Like if you're not a content creator and you like watch YouTube, well, you'd be like, oh my look. god, or just or Instagram or TikTok. You're yeah. like, there's so many people. So that, that was, was really a very cool high to ratio. To, yeah, yeah, to get to meet and hang out with all these people because we knew a couple of them, but there were some that we'd only ever kind of talked uh, remotely, like just yeah. sort of yeah, electronically. So, of yeah. course, some people that we're very close to, you know, Alex from Board Game Co, yes. um, Professor Meg yes. and Devin. Devin. Uh, yeah. We love hanging out with that crew. They're yeah. so. Im- they're just lovely warm people yeah. and we have so much fun when we play together mm. and we got an opportunity to play race to the raft with mm-hmm. them yeah um and also a game of decrypto that's right yeah our second ever game of decrypto yeah yes. and so it was just nice to be able to play some games yeah um, and i'll talk if you want to skip ahead you know we do talk about some games that were new to us from the con yeah um but we also got to meet adam from shelf clutter yeah and he is someone that i've watched for a long time he obviously does his like kickstarter crowdfunding mm. roundup every every week yeah. and um i yeah i've just watched this channel for such a long time and i had one of those moments when mm-hmm. i was sitting across the table from him and he was just talking about something <laughs> and i just said to him like this is so weird to hear your voice yeah, yeah because yeah. the just the way he talks is so much like the videos that yeah. you're like am i watching it's a like, video and you're like oh no yeah, he's right here yeah, in front of that me. moment you're like i know like i feel like i'm in, i'm watching a video because it's yeah. like i've done i've heard this voice in this exact same yeah and he's like i think i sound different in person like no you sound yeah. exactly the same yeah. but he <laughs> is a lot of fun and we yeah. spent a lot of time gaming um with yeah. adam so that was great uh we also got to meet jenna from Finally. the board yes. game yes. garden we yeah. hadn't met jenna before so that was really cool got to play a few games got yes. to uh, should i go into the games no we'll yeah, wait we'll, we'll wait until the, the games let's keep talking about the people yeah we because managed they're to, the best we actually managed to be in the same teams a couple of times which we did was, we yeah, played a lot fun. with jenna and yeah. she is as down to earth yeah. and lovely so and yeah. like you know her board game channel if you haven't if you haven't checked it out go and check it out mm. board game god i'm sure you have but you know she is really into cozy games and, yeah. and her channel has that vibe and that's mm. exactly what she's like yeah. in person yeah. so it was super lovely to meet her we also got to meet um Carly from Board Game Buzz. Now, Carly has a really 
new YouTube channel has、mm-hmm. been on Instagram for a while, but、um, go and check out Board Game Buzz. I'll link to everything below.、Mm-hmm. I think that if you like our channel, you will absolutely love Carly.、Um, she was such great fun to play with. We so, had, yeah, and between Jenna and Carly, we had so many laughs, so many yeah, laughs. Was, Heart of gold. It's just like the kind of people that you just enjoy, like you just very endearing. Feel like this is what life is meant to be. Like <laughs>、yeah. just like having good times with、yeah. awesome people. That was really,、yeah. really, really lovely to meet them both.、Um, yeah. We also got to meet. Paradise. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'd already met Jonathan at well, the、yes. last year, at but、Gen、we、Con. didn't get a chance to play and、no. like really get、so、to know each other. This time we got to like hang out with both Jonathan and Mackenzie, so we、yes. got to play like a few games. So that was also really fun. Yes. yes. So they are they are both content creators、mm-hmm. and also designers. Yes. Yes. Spark Avenue. So、mm-hmm. that's going to be. I think maybe there might be some some copies to have a look at at, at Gen, Gen, Gen Con. Con. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's the. That's I'm the, pretty the sure they have a booth. It's going to be very exciting for them. Yeah, so it's their yeah, big so launch. That's exciting. But we did get to play a few games with them, so that was really、yeah. great as well. Who else did we Jeff, get to meet? We met Jeff we from met the Dragons too. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. That's oh、awesome. yeah, we did meet a couple of comedians. Jeff being one of them. Obviously, it's a channel <laughs> where it's all about teaching the rules a little bit yeah, wrong, yeah, in a very unique way. Which、yeah. you, you know, if you know the game, that is pretty hilarious because、yeah. it's just like wildly not. Right, yeah, and we <laughs> got a chance to、right. also hang out with Grant Lyons. Speaking of comedians,、yes. so he did a, his comedy show like、mm. a whole hour of yeah, full jokes, routine, yeah, yeah, full routine about because he's actually、games. a comedian. Like that's his actual job. Yes, so, so yeah, he's、outside. a contributor. He has his own channel, but also a contributor on Rado. So yes,、uh, we get along very well, and、um, we got to meet Michael. From yes, from One Stop Co-op. Co-op. Oh, it was、Shop. so lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He is so lovely. It was a really great time, and I'm f- probably forgetting other people, but there were so many people that we got to chat. Henry,、uh, Henry, designer of parks,、uh, which、yes. I and Cosmoctopus, which I haven't played、mm-hmm. yet, so that's one to check out. But ah.、Oh. I love Henry. Oh, it's just heart of gold. Heart of gold. Just so too pure for this world. Too pure. <laughs> too pure. <laughs> actually, and that's a pretty good segue into the games yes, that we played. Yes, we get、played. to play a couple of games. So that was yeah, yeah. deception games, deception which is what you can、games. tell. Then like the people that are just too pure for this world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's get into the. I think there's twelve of them, and probably gonna、yeah. have to refer to our list because I'm gonna forget some.、Mm-hmm. But twelve、um, games that were new to us. Yeah.、Uh, that we played at Level Up. Yes, and、uh, the first one. Well, actually, let's just talk about these two because Maggie and I don't play a lot of social deduction, deception no, style、I、games. Don't tend to like them. Maggie is very、like、anxious,、them. and I just I don't like. And sometimes I actually just get bored. I'm like, I just don't. Care like I don't feel like I'm doing like anything. She doesn't like lying as well,、yeah. so it's a whole thing. Yeah, and I know a lot of people feel that way. But at a convention,、mm. it's a bit different because often there's like a large group of people that want to play a game,、mm. and I feel like those games are best when. Someone is leading the game, who's、mm. really passionate about the game, and、yeah. can teach everybody what their role is and、yeah. what they're meant to be doing. It can fall a bit flat if you're just trying to learn it out of yeah, a rule book. Yeah, yeah. So we had the opportunity to learn two deception games. The first one is Veiled Fate.、Mm-hmm. Um, so Veiled Fate is、uh, quite an interesting one in that、uh, we had a game of I can't remember how many people were in eight or ten. I think、people? it was eight. Yeah, eight people yeah. maybe. Yeah, eight people. And you have a Uh, I guess an alliance with someone, but you don't know who that person is. Yeah, there's all these deities, and so、yeah. you're going to be one of these deities. And there's two people, like in an eight, and I think it's, it's slightly different depending on the number of players.、Mm-hmm. But in the game that we played, there's two people who are the same deity. So you're kind of like in the same team, but you don't know who they are,、mm-hmm. and so you're ha- trying having to try and figure that out yeah, based we- on like how they're advancing them、yes. or moving others back. Yeah, or- so I might. Let's just. I'm just going to refer to them as like meeples. Yeah, yeah.、Um, so if I'm like moving the yellow meeple around,、mm-hmm. or I'm moving like purple around, you're trying to work out. Well, why am I making purple lose more points, or am I contributing、mm-hmm. so that yellow is、um, advancing more than other colors? Therefore, do you think that I'm yellow?、Mm-hmm. And then I'm trying to work out. Well, you also are helping yellow. So are you my teammate? Yeah. And so the whole time you're trying to work out who's on your side. You're also trying to subtly help different colors, so it's not obvious who you are.、Mm-hmm. Um, Really interesting, pretty stripped back、um, deception social、yeah. deduction game.、Um, we had a lot of fun, but also、um, 
unbeknownst to everybody and each other, we actually <laughs> yeah. were on the same team. We were the yeah, pair. We were the we pair. Were the, we were sitting yeah. next to each other and we were the pair yeah. and we won. Yeah. We so did. that yeah. was pretty amazing. I, it was that whole thing. Was like, I've, and I. I've learned to mistrust Amy in games because we're always so competitive. It's like, yeah. I trust you with everything in life, but in games. <laughs> no way. And so if it was, anything, it took me so long to be like, oh, it's like you're either... You're either very adjacent to me, and so it was, and there was like, no, no, we're actually on the same team. We're this on is, the same this is team. amazing. Yeah. And then I think we worked it out, and we we're like, mm, 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 I think, mm, mm. I think we're, and, and then we won. Um, but the other huge social deduction game that we played um, was Feed the Kraken, mm-hmm. and I'd heard that this was a really great game, and um, it was super interesting. There were eleven of us in this game and apparently yeah. it is best at 11 so we had to wait until we had a full group of 11 yeah. people it's very late at night um but the way this game works is you are um moving a ship through a map and basically one side of the map is going to be a win for the pirates mm-hmm. the other side is going to be a win for the uh, sailors. sailors and then there is a cult group a cult the cultists yeah that are aiming for right down the center. And also they want to try and throw the cult leader to the Kraken Mm -hmm. and instantly win. So they have a couple of different win conditions. And basically everybody gets secretly allocated to one of these teams. Mm. And then Avalon style, you are going out on kind of like a quest or basically you're putting people in charge of the ship Mm. so they're going to be navigating through the waters and and choosing which direction to ultimately go Mm. but because multiple people are involved in that process so maybe there's two people who are choosing two different options of Mm. where to go and then there's one final navigator who chooses you know, ultimately yeah. where you go, but then the navigator can be like, well, I was only given bad yeah, options. I only had two bad options. Yeah, I only so, had two bad options yeah. and you never get to see what their options were. Yeah, so yeah. it's just, of course, lying deception. Yeah. Um, and this was a really funny game because it was a very, I would say, boisterous like group it, loud. it was loud it was, everybody at the con knew it that was we were like playing that this game table that it's like it yeah, was really late like, I think table. we started at 10 p.m or something yeah. like that so it was like late at night loud 11 people table yeah um, yeah and so it was and and anyway so everyone was super loud but what was interesting is um our team i happen to be a pirate mm-hmm. maggie was, was a pirate and jenna, jenna was a pirate from board game yeah. garden and, and we had one more so we had one more um player who was a pirate but then they got thrown overboard he got thrown really, overboard really early, early on. On. so then, so it, then was it was just, like okay, just the three of us how are we gonna yeah. make this happen it was yeah. just jenna maggie and i yeah. and we're all relatively quiet people i'm probably yeah. the loudest of the bunch yeah. but um, everyone else was very loud and we just sat there knowing that we were the pirates yeah. and also because we were so quiet the ship went so far, far to the sailor side to the sailor side we were like we are not going to win this and yeah. then slowly slowly we started inching our well, way I back. think I think the cultists because the cultists want to try and bring it back to the middle so the I think middle, between the yeah. cultists and the pirates so all the pirates knew who each other are the cult leader knows who the cult the cultists are and some people can be turned into um, cult followers essentially throughout the game but they, I think we only had one extra but what person. was amazing is Henry Auburn yes, the designer the, yeah. of parks who's so just very sweet such a sweet he was heart. sitting across from me and I just got suspicious on him and we'd already been we played cockroach <laughs> poker together I'd already been joking about like that I could tell when he was lying yeah. and at one point in the game I just pointed to him and went you're a cultist yeah and that was very aggressive. Very and poor aggressive. Henry looked like, uh oh, how did you know? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that was a little bit much. Yeah. Um, and it was just a hilarious game. But yeah. anyway, we ended up winning as the Pirates, but there was yeah. an epic move by Maggie. It was at an the epic end. fight. I convinced them to throw me overboard instead of the cult leader so yeah. that the cult coldest can win. It really win. came down to Henry and I. I think, I feel like we both had very similar strategies because the whole other thing is um, you have these little wooden guns that you use to vote for mutiny. So when, when a team change the yeah, so when a team has been selected questing. if you kind of go, no, I'm not happy with this. I want to do uh, mutiny. So say this doesn't go ahead and then whoever had the most guns becomes the new captain. So so Henry was kind of piling up on the, the guns and, and managed to towards the end like the second 
to last final move. Do that. Take over control of the ship and allocate it to the team that mm. that would have won the game for the cultist. And then I had a sneaky, like we all have character cards and you can only use them once in the whole game. Mm-hmm. And my character card was, it just all of a sudden gave me two extra guns out of nowhere. So you, so, and that was my strategy. It's like, as well, it's like, just wait until everyone's depleted all of their guns, fighting it out and then have a final, take no, control. no, take control at the very last minute. So that's what Henry did, but he didn't know that I had a card because and then I, you it made, looked like, and then it made Jenna captain. Yes, so. and so Jenna then, of course, gave Maggie a pivotal role. And no, I think I no, I became captain. Oh, you became so, captain. Yeah, I became captain because then I ended up being able to do mutiny with the most guns because everyone had oh, already loaded all the. No. Anyway, anyway, and then I made Jenna the uh, navigator. I think is the role that then gets to pick the final, or or was it you? Anyways. So I, I got, I was oh no, yeah, because you're, you're overboard. Yeah. So yeah, so then Jenna got to pick, and so we won the game. So it was just that, that final. And also, um, there were a lot of people that had trusted me along the way. So thank you for trusting me. <laughs> I'm not trustworthy. So that, that's um, Feed hilarious. the Kraken. That's yeah. a, that was an interesting yeah. one. So they're yeah. both, the, both of them were really fun, you know, convention games, probably not games that we would own no. just because we're also not good at facilitating that kind yeah. of game. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, and Maggie doesn't love them, but we, but there was so, such great memories made yeah. in that game, in those yeah, games. Yeah, that was a fun one. Now, the next game is Devon taught us Moonrakers. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and yes. so Moonrakers is a an Ivy Ivy Games game, mm-hmm. and it's um, basically deck building mm-hmm. where you are going out and trying to fulfill contracts, mm-hmm. and you're going to fulfill contracts with this really interesting cascading action system that you um, draw from. You, basically, you put together using cards from your deck. Mm-hmm. So at the start of your turn, you're going to be drawing. I think it's five cards mm-hmm. out of your deck. But then you are going to be chaining them together in a way that lo- allows you to elongate your turn. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so you want to use different cards that allow you to play more cards, which allows you to play more cards. Yeah, which is a very sim- like a it's very like common deck building. It's not kind as of simple mechanic. as oh yeah, I've got these four cards. It's like you have to be able to play chain them, them together. Chain them together. So yeah. you have to have a generator that then gives you two spots, and then you kind of put mm-hmm. one on, then you can, and then that's how you. Play. Yeah, but then the trick to this game is you can also you also have yours spaceship i want to say it's a spaceship i think something. so yeah, something yeah, spacey yeah, yeah because spaceship. like that's what you then do yeah upgrades. and you're upgrading and that's going to do a couple of things that's going to give people asymmetric powers in the game but it's also mm. going to bring more cards of a certain <laughs> type into your deck and the reason why that is public and interesting is because um, along the way you're going to be trying to fulfill contracts with the help of your opponents, mm. and every contract needs certain requirements to be drawn out of, uh, to basically be added to from people's hands. Yeah. And when you have a higher proportion of a, a particular type of card, then people are going to think, or well, it's true that you have um, greater odds of pulling those cards out. So if I wa- if I go for a contract that needs a certain type of card, and mm. Maggie I know has a lot of that card in her deck. I'll choose Maggie but to you're come also, on like You're also talking thing. it through. So I'm saying, I yeah. can help with that thing. I can provide you with three of that yeah. thing and I can help. But, but then when it gets down to the random draws out of yeah. your deck, you know, that's when you know this person has a higher proportion yeah. of these cards, which I think is a really interesting kind of overlay to that deck building because normally you wouldn't know what people are taking. Like, it, Otherwise, you'd have to remember mm. what people are taking, whereas yeah. your spaceship kind of gives you an idea of what's in their deck. Yeah. The other thing is you can hire different staff members as well or yeah. employees. But then and the they... best thing is that when you're bringing people on yeah. board, you get to divvy up the spoils. So yes. you, you get to arrange beforehand going, okay, you know, I'm willing, I, I want some help and I'm willing to give away the, all the money that this contract's going to give at, but I need to keep the victory point. Or I'm giving, I'm willing to give away one of the victory points and half of the money. And then, so that's a big part of the. Yeah, because when, also when you're undertaking a contract mm-hmm. with a couple of people around the table, um, there is risk associated with that. You have to mm-hmm. roll dice that are going to give you damage and yep. you don't want to take on that damage. And so the negotiation is really interesting because it's like, hey, I know you've got a lot of shields. Yeah, like, so you can maybe take you damage. can take. Take one of the die mm. and roll that, and you can you can yeah help with the damage. Whereas, and then I'll give you a victory point. And in this game, victory points are everything because it's the first one to hit 
10 victory yeah, points yeah. just wins the game. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, just a really low scoring game. Yeah. You've got to be really careful who you give victory points to yeah. and when. Um, and obviously this game relies a lot on table talk, a lot yes. on that negotiation. And so I think for, like, I really enjoyed it much I more also than really I thought I was it, going to. But it's going to make or break the, the group of people group that of you're people. playing it with because it can go really, really nasty and sour. It could if you have the wrong. It could, group. yes. We don't know that for sure, but no. it could mm. um, because there's also you know you could do a bit of king making, absolutely, yeah, queen yeah. making. Uh, because if you're someone's far behind, obviously, then you yeah. want them to come on contracts yeah. with you because they've got no chance of winning. So yeah, yeah. it ends up with everyone being quite you know yeah. similar in ranking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really enjoy the deck building component. Yeah. And with of it, the right but, group, I think it's an excellent. Even for yeah. someone who doesn't really enjoy negotiation, I actually oh, like, really really fun. enjoy. Yeah, it. and the artwork is mwah, yeah. Just really beautiful, stylized, really yeah. minimalistic, and really gorgeous. Yeah. What else did we play? We played uh, a game of Merchant's Code. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of my grail game because I remember at one point I don't know a why. Grail game. Yeah, because it's like you couldn't, you can't find it anywhere. And I and I didn't even think of this. It was you who I I think at one point I said I love merchant themed games. And you were like, oh, you should get this one. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I started looking for it. And then I was like, oh, I really like the artwork. I really like it. And then it's like, you can't find it anywhere. Like, it doesn't matter how much you're like willing to go, like look for. And so then I was like, oh, now I really want it. And they had it. And I didn't realize they had it how... in the library. And what was the funny library, is, yeah. I think Carly said, I've always wanted to play this yes. game. And Maggie said, so have I. Yeah. And so I was like, well, if both of you are so excited about this, let's get it out and play it. Yeah. And so we set it up and Jenna joined us as well. So it was the four of us playing. And Jenna had played it before. But if you don't know Merchant's Cove, basically every player has an asymmetric completely mechanic. Asymmetric. Like asymmetric. Completely different player board that... You're all doing the same thing, which is you are creating goods for sale in the market. Mm. So everybody wants to do that, but you're each doing it in a different way. So one one is has marbles and it's a bit like the alchemist. The one I was doing was a push and luck explosion. Game. Yeah, it's a bit like push and explosion. Uh, yeah, one was like um. Sorry, mine was like a push your luck game where I was moving a ship around. Yeah. Yours was, was like, like a, a rondelle. rondelle kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, they're all wildly And Jenna had it like the dice worker placement That's style right. game. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. anyway, so you're all playing these different things. And so because of that, there's a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit tricky to learn. Plus I had some issues with that rule book. The rule book is not the good. Iconography, it's, it's a mess the iconography. iconography was yeah. difficult trying yeah. to work out what everything was and even who what pieces belong to which play anyway so once we worked through that what was super funny is that we obviously looked a bit lost and a couple of people yeah. came over and they were like hey let us help you we know how to play it mm-hmm. and so some people got us started and that was really yeah. great and then some other people came over and like i always play as that that character yeah. so let me teach you and then i looked up and at one point there was like 10 people yeah. around our table <laughs> like trying to help us and then out of nowhere the designer came yeah. over and we like, were like oh. The like, designers, yeah, like, things he, really escalated. Yeah, from like he got a photo like, in front of it while we were learning. Then he walked off, and I was like, oh, I should have asked him some questions. <laughs> now he's gone. Should have clarified um, some things while he was. Here. Yeah, but yeah. basically, we muddled through. And we worked it out, and yep. then um, we did have this full game, and it was, um, that was, that was super fun. interesting. Yeah, it was really some fun. Really we, funny moments. Of really misunderstandings funny of things as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, for me, the game is a like what's very multiplayer solitaire. It the is. interaction on the main board is very minimal and I just felt like for me it wasn't scratching the itch of like actually engaging with the other players I was mm-hmm. just like on my own little map going yeah what am I trying to figure it's out got here? some really hardcore fans of the game like people who just love it and play it all the time and I can see as a multiplayer solitaire lover myself it's like yeah I love not having to worry too much about you know what other people are doing mm-hmm. I love the fact that then all the different um all the different characters means that then you can like there's a lot of different essentially mini games that you're getting to to learn it's something that I know we'd never really play um together mm-hmm. so it would be something that if I were to still at some point find it I would just be playing it solo. And apparently the solo is quite good because mm. it's so multiplayer solitaire. It often has fairly straightforward, like multiplayer solitaire games have fairly straightforward solo modes. Mm. That is more because about it's very cracking, similar to the actual game. Yeah, where it's, it's more about kind of cracking your own puzzle yeah. and optimizing your own puzzle. And because there's so many different puzzles with all these uh, yeah, asymmetric abilities, it's like, oh, that could be quite cool. And I think there might be even like challenges and stuff. So mm. it's like, that's that's a potential for me. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And we, play? uh, we played, well, actually, at one point in the convention, Maggie and I went our separate ways, and I yeah. got to play a card game that was on my most anticipated for Gen Con. So this is an early oh, yeah, look yeah. at 
、um, inheritors.、Mm -hmm. And inheritors is、uh, if you watched our Gen Con video, it's a a very small card game that. Has a lot inside it because、mm. you are going to basically be setting up this market of cards,、um, as well as quests that are either like public kind of objectives or private objectives、mm. that you're going to be able to take. And eventually, you're going to get one simple asymmetric power throughout the whole course of the game, and they are also they're ready to be drafted.、Mm. But、um, what you're doing in this game is you are trying to create. Stacks of suits in、um, ascending order. So, in order to start a stack of blue, I need to play the one first, then the two,、mm. then the three. And at the end of the game, you're going to score points for the highest card that you've reached in each of your stacks. But it's not that simple because you're working with a hand of cards, and you really have to leverage the market、mm. to get the cards that you need, as well as the fact that there are other cards that have powers that are going to allow you to do different things, like try and flush a card out of someone. Else's hand, or allow you to skip numbers in the succession of playing down into these stacks. And so, anyway, there's a lot going on here.、Um, but for a card game, I just found it really intriguing. It took me a while to wrap my head around it because there was a little、mm. bit going on. And of course, in, after one game, I don't, you know, don't have a full review of it. But there was enough in it that I was like, this is really interesting, and I want to play more of it, and I want to teach Maggie、mm. it. So it's still, it's on the Gen Con list for purchase.、Mm. So it, ha it hasn't been weeded out. Out of that okay, list, I'm、okay. still really intrigued to play more. Of it.、Um, I played Forest of Pangaea, which I hadn't actually heard of. I don't think. Yes. Maybe it's one of those like it was on we probably even like we probably even covered, and then I just like goldfish style. Like my、yeah. memory is very very bad.、Um, but I, yeah, it's a beautiful beautiful game where you are. Uh, essentially, growing all these、uh, these trees. So you're planting.、Uh, you're you're first kind of getting these、um, seeds. So you're planting these seeds and, and growing either the base tree, and then you're adding、uh, more canopies to make these the trees、uh, higher. But the whole thing is you have you get to pick these different objectives, which are about kind of creating pathways between your trees、um, in different terrains. So there's like a yeah, there's a Field terrain and a desert terrain and a kind of winter ice terrain, and so all these different objectives might be either about connecting or about having the tallest tree in、mm -hmm. a particular type of terrain. And at the point that you decide to kind of cash that in, it's really interesting because then the trees sort of degrade. So if it's the objective of the tallest tree, you actually lose the entire tree, and it kind of spreads out different seeds all,、uh, around it. So it kind of brings you back.、Um, it doesn't. It, it, it's not one of those games that's just like endlessly building and building and building. It's like every time you claim one of those, even if it's one of those connecting different terrains, each one of your of the connections along the way that's yours either completely leaves the board or loses a level.、Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting kind of、uh, yeah, like a couple steps forwards, one step back. But at the same time, on your own player board, you're also unlocking all these different、um, areas that give you all these different acorns and like. So there's there's a lot of different things going on. The the production is just so beautiful. It was really beautiful. The the、yeah. um the actual boards and the little the little wooden trees are so so、mm -hmm. cute. And you've got like this little kind of character. Um, everyone has like their own little golem, which is the artwork is beautiful, but it doesn't really do、um, that much. It's just like <laughs> it's just that it's beautiful. Yeah. So it's still, I think, for me, I loved、um, I loved the theme and the concept, but it's still fairly abstract as an experience. So it's probably not a game that I would. Yeah, like seek. Need to have. Yeah, need、collection. to have. But it was actually really. You did win was, though. I think I turned I up at your table. It was it was one of those like dark horse <laughs> sort of from because I was just nowhere near, and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to pivot, and I、yeah. did, and it, it kind of worked out. Yeah. But yeah, lovely folks、really、that、nice. I played that with as well.、So、yeah, there were so many lovely people that we、yeah. played games with. I、yeah. should say as well, like the the Joey fam was there, as well as a lot of viewers、yeah. of the channel, and、yeah. thank you everyone for coming up and just saying hi, stopping us. When we we're walking between things, or sitting down to play a little、mm. filler game with us,、yeah. like it was so nice to meet you all. So thank you so much for that. It means the world to us. Yeah.、Um, also, then we got back together and we played a game called Scots, which、oh, yeah. is a little card game with、uh, that is basically a push your luck game. Where you are rolling dice, and these dice are these black and regular kind of black and white、um, mm -hmm. dice, but they represent the spots on different、mm -hmm. dogs. Yeah, and each of these different dogs, beautiful like, artwork, spot clusters on、yeah. dogs. Yeah, each of these.、Um, Cards have yet、yeah, a dog on them or multiple dogs on them, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to 
roll the the right value to go onto these cards and then you're pushing your luck to achieve more and more um, dogs before you skip a turn in order to bank them. Mm. Um, and so that's essentially the game is like, yeah. um, but there's these different action cards in the center and on your turn, you're going to be choosing one of those and they each do different things. So they allow you to uh, roll more dice. They're going to allow yeah. you to get treats, which are, are basically like a re-roll mm-hmm. ability. Um, so yeah. And every person can only pick one of those actions in each mm. round. Um, I really adored the art in this yeah, game. Yeah, it's pretty cute. Uh, but I found it was very luck, very, it's very lucky. luck driven. Of yeah. course, because you're rolling a bunch of dice and yeah. that ob- obviously makes it very luck driven. But it was kind of to the point where I felt like I almost could have no strategy because I was very much tied to whatever the dice roll yeah. was. Yeah, I think, well, we also just played with one set. I think there's other sets of like actions that yes. you can take and yeah. maybe some of the other actions help you mitigate. Maybe. I think with the set that we were playing, the only mitigation was like the getting treats. more treats. And, that and then I re-roll. started getting lots and lots of treats so I could re-roll. But then but a re-roll, re-roll is doesn't not a guarantee. guarantee. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't guarantee you anything yeah. um so and also for me it was just a little bit light so yeah it's very um, light. probably not a game i need to own but it's super cute and it's i just I really appreciated the artwork and i feel like it'll be very family friendly oh yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah um another game that we played hold on working our way what through else? the list what else um i can't read my handwriting <laughs> I can't uh, read we it. did play decrypto we so talked about that one we, yeah, ta- we didn't talk about so, it in detail though I think Decrypto is a game that we'd only played once, once. or twice before. With Alex and, as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alex loves yeah. bringing I, I had played it once before that at okay. a con, and then Alex taught us again, and now Alex and um, other people, so Jenna yeah, was there as well. Professor Meg was there, was there. Well. Yeah. So we played this like big group game of Decrypto, and that game is so interesting, makes my head hurt. Yeah. It, like, it's really fascinating is- because you have these four code words, and basically, you are trying to um, communicate a code that relates to the numbers that each of these words represent. And you're trying to do it in a way that means that the other group can't work out yeah. what your four keywords are. And your team can see the words and they're trying to also work out what the code is. Yeah. And it's it's long. I will say the game well, is long. Well, our game, apparently, a game, you know, it's like we almost won it after the second round and then we sort of lost our way. And then it became one of the longest games. So we it actually used every long. single space in that sheet um, that where you're kind of trying to work things out. And apparently games don't tend to go that long, um, but we did. Also, we were all chatting and, it yeah. was, and we were eating and it was No, but also like, it, went, it yeah. went long but just in long. terms of like the number of attempts yeah. back and forth. So because the whole thing is you're either trying to, it's like two right or two wrong, I can't remember, but you're both trying to, and there are sets where you're, you're trying to get mm. your own team mm. to guess, even though your team knows the, the, the words, you're then creating, um, cause it's, the code is a sequence. So like one, three, two might be. And so like, I know what the words are. I need to give them words that hint at those words, but they can't be too obvious that the mm. other team over time starts going, oh, I think what their word is because Which I've heard do. enough, uh, yeah. clues that relate to one central thing. Yeah. So it's that sort of double kind of, you want to make it obvious enough and not Mm -hmm. too obvious. Yeah. So for me, I find these games like, when I think about a party game, I prefer it to be a little bit more lively or a little bit more snappy. Um, So it kind of sits in the same space as Code Names for me, which is not a game that I love either. It's like, I will sit down and play it. And Mm -hmm. if you really want to play it, of course, we'll we'll play. But Mm. um, it's not like, it's a bit head down thinky for the type of yeah. Yeah, like the type of situations that we have. Like, I don't have many occasions for this type of game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like I enjoyed playing it. I yeah, enjoyed it's thinking an interesting. About yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, but I just find it too stressful. And I find yeah. I don't I don't enjoy myself. It's like it's just yeah. like, and then when it's your turn, you're like it's, it feels like so much pressure to come up with the the mm-hmm. clues, and then if the other team guesses, and you're like, oh no, I like. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly can't read my head. Oh, oh, that's the game. That's the game. So one of the games that I saw in the library, Mm. which was a game that we covered in back chat. So we looked at the campaign and a game that I regretted not backing is a game called Four Humans. Yeah. And as soon as we walked in, I saw it in the library. It was in shrink. And I said, if we get any time to sit down and learn a game from the rule book, Mm. that's the game I'm going to learn. And so I did. Like at one point we had a bit of a lull and I sat down and I learned it. And then I taught it to a group of us. And um, it's such a fascinating game. Such a quirky game. It is very quirky. So in this game, 
It's basically an area control type game,、mm. but you're placing tokens down onto a map that has six different islands. Let's call them connected by bridges, and you're trying to、um, basically you're trying to align the layout of these with four different objectives、mm. that are randomly placed out as part of the setup. Yeah. But the way that you're going to be able to get tokens onto the board is by taking part in these scenes,、mm. which are these giant cards that sit off to the side, and you're going to be put, using blind bidding. So what you're going to be doing is drawing out four potions、mm. out of a bag at a time, and each of these potions have different symbols that relate to a hierarchy、mm. of. Uh, the way that they score and win. Yeah. So, for example, the 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 number one way to win is that if you put a sword down, and remember they go face down, so nobody knows where、yeah. they are, onto one of these scenes, and you're the only person that places a sword, you instantly win、sword、that scene.、Wins. But if two people place swords down, then swords neither、out. of them win, <laughs> and then it moves to the next win condition. And so, what you're trying to do is you're trying to do a little bit of table talk,、mm. a little bit of like, well. You know, I'm putting a heart down here, even、mm. though they can't see what you're placing. So,、mm. if anybody else wants to place a heart down here, if we, if two of us put a heart down, we're going to win this、yeah. scene. So, come and join me,、yeah. and then they can't you know. see what you're placing, but、no. they know that it's only one of two possibilities. So,、yes. every spot can be only one of two possibilities. Yeah, so that's where, like,、simple. yeah, you can do a little bit of deduction and go,、oh, but there can still be a lot of、yeah. bluffing. So, oh, yeah. yeah, basically, you're just trying to win these scenes. If you win the scene, then you get to place a token、mm. um, where that scene took place on the board. In order to meet these four objectives, and、yeah. there's more complexities to the game, but that's enough to give you an idea of like、yeah. how this game plays. It's really interesting from a like I think it's the reveal that makes it fun. So you、mm. know you you when you score the scenes, you turn them over, and it's like ooh heart,、mm. heart your heart, and then it's like a sword. Someone、yeah. like backstabbed you, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so、um, it was a really cute, interesting. I also、game. love like the artwork is really nice, and in the scenes, what I love like this is because it's a fairly Abstract game.、Mm-hmm. However, this was so clever as a as a themer. I just thoroughly enjoy this. The characters, because you're placing those those potions on characters, and it's representing you're influencing their sort of yeah their mood to act you know in a yeah, particular way. way. And the the ways that they can be influenced influenced is correlates to their type of character. So, for example, you might have、um, a character is like a、um, a knight, and the knight is either patient. Or a sword, like or a fighter. So it's either aggressive or they'll just like sit tight. And then you have a there was a nun, and the nun is either a little hard or patient. And then you have like there were royals, and there's like one scene that's like two royals in bed, and it's like they're either a betrayal, so it's either a sword or a、uh-huh. heart. And so the way and like they're they're kind of like hey like sort of. They're being they're being loving, but then on the one side one has like a, a sword, and the other ha- one has poison. So it's like. Without any words, and there's only、words. two spaces on that yeah, scene. Yeah, so only two、to. people can、yeah. go. Then either they both put hearts, or one of them puts a sword, or they both、yeah. put swords, and nobody wins. So it's kind of like that really interesting. It、dynamic. was such a simple way of adding this beautiful thematic, almost kind of like funny、uh, element to it, and made everything then made sense. If you're not a themer, it didn't matter because it's like it's a really abstract game. But if you are, it's like oh, I was just so thrilled <laughs> with, with <laughs> each one of those things. I'm going, of course, because of creating my own little story.、Mm-hmm. So. I yeah, I really resonated with this game. Even yeah, it was like such a quirky. We played it twice.、One. We played it once late at night, and I taught it once as well. Like、mm-hmm. I ran off from a game because I saw people trying to learn it from the rule book, and we're like, yeah, yeah.、Ah, I can help you learn yeah, that one. That was that、yeah. was fun. That、I、was really, really、like、good.、Um, another one we played with Terradice. So Jonathan、oh, yes. and Mackenzie was、yes. Castles by the Sea,、yes. which is another game that we had covered on Back Chat,、mm. but we hadn't backed,、um, which is this beautiful. Um, production, yeah. Beautiful production that where you're playing with different blocks, like wooden blocks,、yeah. and basically you're making sand castles by the seaside.、Mm-hmm. And so the board represents kind of different areas where you can build up sand castles. And we are all、um, essentially the scenes are creating a miniature world, yeah, like, yeah, yeah which yeah, is yeah. really cute、yeah. the way it works. And so you can also you're building up using blocks like sand castles, but then you're also placing. These little meeples on there. That's like a princess、mm. or like、um, a little guard, guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or a little archer. Yeah, and they can only be placed on the sand castles in certain positions.、Mm. But what's really interesting about this game is like you've got buildings and you've got characters, and they're all on cards. And as you remove them and put、mm. them onto the board, they're going to.、Um, 
give you income. Yeah. And so you want to have as many of them removed and on the board as possible. But then what happens is there's these um, tokens hazards. that are hazards <laughs> that are moving around the board, and they're really cute and thematic. Like one is a dog that is going to like yeah. come barreling terror. through and terror the dog. Yeah, yeah. and that one's a crab that's like you know, and then there's a sandstorm. So there's all these yeah. little things that would affect like a community of very um, thematic sand castles. Actually, yeah, yeah. Um, and you have uh, you get to manipulate where those go mm. and who they're attacking, mm. and so you're trying to just basically build up as much as possible, mm. and then with stand all of these yeah. hazards that are coming through and opponents are trying to take you down but yeah. anyway um i thought it was really i thought it was really beautiful actually and i thought it set out what it set out to do it achieve perfectly i agree yeah 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 i mean i think for me it's just it's a little bit like the puzzle itself is obviously quite abstract and i don't tend to enjoy games where your progress gets destroyed yeah and there's so much of that where you're like oh okay this got destroyed and so it goes back and then you, um but i think it was re- like the actual puzzle is quite clever yeah so again even though it's not one that would be for me i just loved all the little like i just found great delight in all the little details of like you know one of the hazards apparently is like a big baby and so the way that it destroys things on the board or the, like I found that really amusing yeah and the production very is cute. beautiful like it's yeah. so nice to have like the tactile elements of you kind of feel like a kid again like playing yeah, with the, the wooden, blocks. wooden yeah. blocks and mm-hmm. building stuff yeah it is a beautiful production mm-hmm. and yeah. yeah I think yeah maybe a little light for us I'm not sure but um or mm. yeah I don't know I think for me but, it's just that it's a bit more on the abstract side yeah. even though it's sort of thematic and, and yeah. actually it's not so much that it's on the abstract, abstract side I think it's the losing your progress Thing I don't tend to enjoy yeah. in games. There was more. Yeah. There was more crunch to it though than yeah. I expected, yeah. and I really liked how you had secret objectives mm. as well, and so yes. you could kind of work towards something. I really liked. That. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's Castles by the Sea. Um, then we also played Stone Spire Architects. Mm. Yeah. Now this is a really interesting game. It's by the same. It's by the same uh, publisher, Thunderwork Games, as Cartographers. Uh, Cartographers. Yeah. So it's still the same universe. Yeah, in that yeah. world. Um, so you'd be familiar with the art. But mm-hmm. what you're doing in this game is this is a card drafting game mm-hmm. where you are passing the hand of cards around yep. the table and you're going to be taking a card out. And what you're doing is you're building essentially, I think it's a four by four grid yeah. of cards, dungeon, which creates um, a dungeon. And each of these cards has a particular path. So Ideally, you are trying to connect your top dungeon door to the bottom Mm. dungeon door um, across the course of the game. But what's really fascinating about this game is um, that there are things that are inside each of these uh, uh, kind of parts of the dungeon. Mm. So there will be traps, there will be different creatures, there Mm. will be treasure chests which give you income, um, and there will just be straight up victory points. And so you're building out a dungeon that is trying to fulfill different objectives that are also um, available publicly. However, these objectives are going to be um, drafted as well Mm. based on the first person who um, passes in the money phase of the game. Mm -hmm. So across the course of the game, you're going to be generating money. And then what's interesting is you can use that money in the second round of the game. So after we've built out a layer of the dungeon, we're Mm -hmm. going to use that money to then add elements to um, the puzzle. So if I was missing a particular type of trap that I needed in my dungeon, I could buy one from the market and add it to the card. Or if it didn't have the right pathway Mm. that I needed, I could buy a little pathway that connects two cards that wouldn't otherwise be connected. However, during that market phase, the first person to opt out of buying any more stuff gets the first pick first choice, of the yeah. objectives that are going to score you for your dungeon at the end of the game. So that's a really interesting tension right off the bat of like, do I stay in the market and spend my money? Because you don't get to, to keep your money no. between rounds. So, you know, a, a lot of the time I had the most money, but I was also always the first person to go out because yeah. I knew that just getting that right card would yeah. give me 15 victory points at the end of the game because it was pretty much already set up in my mm. dungeon. So yeah. um, really interesting, yeah. interesting game. Uh, it's very multiplayer solitaire in it the is. sense that what you're doing, obviously you're drafting, so you're, you're kind of picking cards. So there's that level of interaction, but it's not like you... Yeah, can... I think someone said to me, but don't you find it interactive because of the drafting of cards? And it's like, yeah, but there's so much going on and your yeah, yeah. puzzle is so difficult and so many layers because you there's end layers. up getting multiple yeah. objectives. 
and you're thinking about what you need to buy from the market, it's very hard to hate draft or yeah. do anything like that. And it wouldn't make sense to hate draft no. because it, the card's probably not going to fit in your dungeon. Yeah. So I was I was kind of uh, aware of what I was handing mm. Maggie around the table, but not enough to like do yeah. anything about it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and I think the market as well is a little bit interactive, but mostly you're all trying to achieve different things. So. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it because it's like, yeah, I love obviously multiplayer solitaire, but I love also games where you're kind of generating income and then upgrading things or like buying stuff. And so this one, shopping, yeah, shopping. And so I, I really enjoy that. I think in our house, it'd probably be something that I would play solo. And I don't know why, but it's like the same thing with cartographers. I really enjoy cartographers. Um, but it's like, I'm very bad at it. <laughs> I was like, oh, this one. I was like, I started out so well. And then I was like, ah, oh, I didn't do so well, but I enjoy my experience. So it's yeah. fun that I would that I would explore a bit more knowing that I would probably only end up playing it solo because yeah. I don't think you'd want to get it out. I mean, I, I enjoyed it fun. I won. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed the puzzle of mm. it and yeah. everything. I really liked the different objective cards. Yeah. Was, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I liked it fine. Okay. Yeah, I liked it. It was good. Now, the um, last game. Is it the is, last one? Yeah, the last one yeah. is Dawn of Ulos, which is still in the same universe. <laughs> in the same universe. Um, yeah. This is a fascinating game because it is a um, fantasy world, obviously, uh, but it is a share market yeah. game. Is it's it, like a is stock it game. An official re-implementation of Acquire, or is it just like Acquire? I think it's like Acquire. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's not official in any way. Okay. You didn't hear that here. You didn't hear it from us. But um, <laughs> you are basically instead inspired of... Inspired by games in, like... Instead of buying shares in companies in this game, you are essentially aligning yourself with different factions. Mm -hmm. And these factions um, belong to nobody, um, as in the share market games. The companies Mm -hmm. don't belong to anyone. But what you are trying to do is uh, influence the value of the shares Mm -hmm. or the the worth of being aligned with those different factions. Which in there is like the power. So it's like their their power and And their strength. Mm -hmm. Well, I I don't know. Like there's a couple of different indicators. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But basically what you're going to be doing to influence all of this is building out a terrain-based tile laying puzzle. Mm. And so each of the different factions are eventually going to come out onto the board and once they're on the board, you can add tiles on your turn. You have to add a tile down mm. onto the puzzle yep. puzzle board. And each of the factions have different uh, tile terrain types that are going to give them strength. And so they're mm-hmm. going to go up in value. And then at the end of your turn, you can buy cards mm. that relate to each of these factions. And as they go up in value, they become more expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but And the other cool thing is once these cards are in your hand, you can actually use them for the power that they have. But if you're doing that, you're essentially giving up a share. Mm. So you are like losing that card that yeah. later you could um, get cash in for yeah. money. Um, and then what's the other interesting element is that the terrain tiles become closer and closer together. So the factions get closer and closer together. And when someone puts a terrain tile that would link two mm-hmm. factions, they go into battle. Yeah. And the way that a battle plays out is that basically every person around the table gets the opportunity to add cards from their hand into the battle mm-hmm. face down. So nobody knows what's being bid. And you could be bluffing as well. Yeah. yeah. So you could add other cards in that, that don't are not even in the battle. So yeah. Just, but yeah. once these cards are revealed, we count up the number that belongs to each of the factions in the battle. And the one that wins basically wipes the other mm-hmm. um, faction off the board, takes all of their terrain. So mm-hmm. usually we'll get this huge boost in strength, mm-hmm. whereas the other one is basically a market crash. Yeah, it goes all the way it to zero way to zero and so if if at that point you've got these cards they become worthless but if you're on the winning faction Mm. these cards are now worth a lot and you want to sell them and it's so it's just really fascinating the Mm. way that this uh mashes up fantasy with these ideas of stock holding like shareholding and share market Mm. so fascinating design just like really intriguing it's really like it took a like I like, I really love shareholding type games. Mm-hmm. This one took me a little bit to wrap my head around. I think because there was the added layer of the terrain stuff and then the cards having abilities as mm-hmm. well. So every faction has an ability. So you can actually spend the cards 
not just in battles yeah. and stuff, but for their bit. And I think that added that extra layer of complexity. And there's a whole bunch of Different factions. factions so yeah. you usually play with, like, I think we were playing with four because mm-hmm. of the number of players. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you could be mixing in. So there's a lot of game in this. I enjoyed it, but I think it's one that I'd have to play a little bit more to like then feel more comfortable with the flow and mm. then be able to be like, yeah, give you a more informed yeah, but it, uh, opinion of it. But it really enjoy, surprised really me because from there. the look of the box, it seems very, you yeah. know, big box fantasy heavy. And we're like, oh, I don't know if this yeah. is going to be for us, but I actually really enjoyed that the way, like just mm. the associations with a share market and like linking mm. it back to that for me. Uh, yeah. Do I like it more than a game that would be just themed as a share market? Maybe not, because I think I would prefer just the share market. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah. But I really liked the creativity and yeah. the way that everything comes together. Just yeah. really, really smart. So I thought that was yeah. a, a really cool game. And that, that's basically all the games that They're we played. They're not the games? We're sure of this? Yeah, okay, I think that's good. all the games that we played at Level Up that were new to us. We, of course, played a few games that we yeah, played yeah. before. Um, but it was really, really cool. And, you know, if, if Level Up Retreat happens again in Connecticut yeah. I would love to go again and it's a great time so it had a relaxed. really relaxed vibe yeah. it reminded uh, me of a smaller version of maybe something like Dice Tower West which mm. is very gaming focused con yeah. this was all about the people there and the games they were playing it was yeah. just fantastic was a really good. really lovely few yeah. days we, we game from 9 a.m till 3 a.m. every <laughs> single day like we just pushed as hard as we could I don't think I ever went past games. midnight I think I, my, midnight is my like no, 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 one, uh, one no, no, we were up late, so you, <laughs> I don't you were having so much fun, yeah, you didn't time even realise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that is everything from us, thank you so much if you're watching this, um, we are obviously not in our studio, yeah. we're trying to get some videos out while we can, um, Gen next Con stop is Gen Con, next. well, Actually, first we're going to Chicago. Yeah. We're definitely going to go check out the um, all of the board game places that people mm-hmm. recommended to us in the comments. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll have some Gen Con coverage. Yeah. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll be back with more board game content soon. But otherwise, bye for now. Bye.